In this lecture, we will discuss 12 pitfalls in the management of traumatic cardiac arrest, a stressful resuscitation scenario that requires the coordinated skills of emergency medical personnel, surgeons, and intensivists. Pitfall number one. PEA, pulseless electrical activity, is the most common rhythm in traumatic cardiac arrest. Unlike medical cardiac arrest, ventricular fibrillation is uncommon in traumatic cardiac arrest, and therefore, AED is less helpful in the management of traumatic cardiac arrest. Pitfall number two. Inadequate treatment specific for trauma. Despite differences in pathophysiology, traumatic cardiac arrest is frequently treated similarly to medical cardiac arrest, such as chest compressions, epinephrine, and fluids, which may not be effective for traumatic cardiac arrest. Pitfall number three. Failure to identify reversible causes. Reversible causes of cardiac arrest and trauma include bleeding, tension pneumothorax, cardiac tamponade, cervical cord injury, and intracranial hemorrhage, which must be promptly managed. Pitfall number four. Chest compressions alone have no role in traumatic cardiac arrest. Chest compressions could potentially worsen injuries or delay critical interventions to treat reversible causes. Nevertheless, chest compressions are still recommended if there's a treatable underlying medical cause of arrest. Pitfall number five. De-emphasize epinephrine use. Epinephrine should be considered in traumatic cardiac arrest if there is an underlying medical condition. Prioritizing epinephrine in traumatic cardiac arrest resuscitations may not be beneficial in cases of hypovolemia or obstructive shock. Pitfall number six. Intubation should not be delayed to address alternative reversible causes of arrest in traumatic cardiac arrest patients, especially those with head, neck, or facial injuries. Pitfall number seven. Resuscitative thoracotomy may be harmful. While it can be life-saving in specific situations, the procedure is invasive, carries high risks, and may be considered futile in some cases. Resuscitative thoracotomy should only be considered in specific, life-threatening situations in order to relieve cardiac tamponade, repair cardiac injuries, control pulmonary bleeding, or repair aortic injuries. Pitfall number 8. Excessive crystalloids may be harmful. It is important to use crystalloids judiciously and to consider the use of a massive transfusion protocol for patients with massive blood loss. Massive transfusion protocols are designed to interrupt the lethal triad of acidosis, hypothermia, and coagulopathy that develops with massive transfusion. Pitfall number 9. Needle decompression may not be effective, perform finger thoracostomy instead. Finger thoracostomy involves making an incision with a scalpel and penetrating directly into the thoracic cavity with forceps and a gloved finger to relieve the tension. Bilateral finger thoracostomy is recommended in traumatic cardiac arrest. Pitfall number 10. Survivability based on point-of-care ultrasound. A systematic review suggested that traumatic cardiac arrest patients without cardiac activity on point-of-care ultrasound have a negligible chance of survival. However, this conclusion is limited by a small sample size. Pitfall number 11. Deciding when to continue resuscitation efforts in traumatic cardiac arrest cases is ethically challenging, considering the balance between potential survival and prolonged suffering. Decisions should be made on a case-by-case -case basis, considering the patient's clinical status, the reversible causes of arrest, the use of resources, and the patient's quality of life. Pitfall number 12. Resource allocation in mass casualty events. 
Allocating resources to traumatic cardiac arrest patients in mass casualty events can be contentious, as it impacts the care of other injured individuals. In conclusion, traumatic cardiac arrest is a complex and challenging medical scenario that demands careful consideration of its unique characteristics. Healthcare providers must prioritize the management of reversible causes and be aware of the controversy surrounding traumatic cardiac arrest treatment. As research continues, the healthcare community should adapt and evolve to improve outcomes for these critically injured patients. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comment section.